The Brainerd Warriors boys soccer team prepared all summer long for the unknown. For senior outside mid Noel Robertson, nerves were the first word that came to his mind in describing the feeling of waiting on the state's decision for his last season as a Warrior. Being on that order from the governor, seeing what was going to happen is super nerve wracking. And like even something as like little as waiting to order cleats because we can't order those in because we didn't know we we're for sure having a season. When Governor Walls did indeed approve a shortened high school season for the fall, head coach Tom Grazam was simply excited. Not only because of all the preparation that had taken place over the summer, but because he was thrilled for his boys to get that chance to compete again. No, we were up in the air, but you know we continued to practice throughout the summer and just preparing for the season just in case. And the season came, so we were ready to start. And and, you know, I was looking forward to it and talking to the boys, they were all excited. Now that the Warriors do indeed have a season to prepare for, their attention and focus shifts to what takes place on the field. As last year's team went further than any before it at Brainerd, making it to the section final. And senior goalie Brandon Neifert believes that last year's run of success can only help push the team further for this year. To see what happened last year and how, how much effort they put in last year really helped us like exceed that, put in a lot of effort so we can do well uh, this season. Now there is no official word yet from the state on whether or not postseason play will be allowed for the soccer season. But regardless, the Warriors and so many others will just be thrilled to get that chance to compete again. Reporting from Brainerd, Brad Hamilton, Lakel News. While this pandemic has caused many within the business community to apply the brakes this summer and adjust to the harsh times, Brian Moon, who is the store overseer at Easy Riders Bike Company, says the Brainerd shop has seen a boom in business this summer. And so people are going for it. They're, they're popping the clutch, they're pulling the trigger, they're getting out and they're doing life on a bike. And we've watched that happening for the last few seasons and then this year even more so. So a trigger event, you know, there's some accelerant that was thrown on the fire and people are having a blast riding bikes. And Moon expressed his appreciation for his co-workers, which includes some volunteers who are working up to 60 hours a week in order to keep up with the surging demand. Our team's hardwired to, to deliver solutions. That's what we do. We're a solution, a solution service center. Um, so we're, we're all convicted and convinced that, that bikes are a great solution. It solves a lot of problems for the community, for our clients. Definitely not easy, even though we're called easy riders. There's a lot of hard work behind that. But it's not just the people selling the bikes that are noticing the resurgence. Carl Shermer, who rides over 7,000 miles a year, explained that he's simply seeing more and more people out on the trails this summer. I've noticed it myself because, uh, you know, you get out there in the country in the morning, fresh air, and all of a sudden I'm seeing riders in places you've never seen them before. And you get on the bike trails at a little busier time of the day, and there's more people on bikes, and, you, and you've just noticed the difference. And Moon admitted that there's no way in predicting if this surge will continue, but he is extremely grateful to a community who is reinvesting in his lifelong passion of bike riding. It's exciting to see business growth, but if we think about what's the net result of business growth, it means more people in our community are riding bikes. And so on my back wall right behind me, you see one word service. That's what Ken and Lori Shepard built the business up. Serving the community. And in 2020, I think we're learning about, you know, the nitty gritty and getting in the trenches and serving. Reporting from Brainerd, Brad Hamilton. Lakeland News. Like so many of us, Brainerd softball coach Shane Jordan has had plenty of time to reflect over the past few months. But instead of being bitter about an end of his team's season before it ever even began, coach is focusing on something different. The power sports truly has in bringing entire communities together. I know we focus on academics and academics are so important, but I think what we're really realizing here is athletics, and um, the arts are, are so important to a school district. It really brings a district, a community together. And like so many coaches across the nation, Jordan had to have some pretty emotional conversations with his seniors, some of whom will never get to lace them up again. But instead of dwelling on the negative, coach wanted his girls to remember what can't be taken away from them. And that is the memories and friendships that will last a lifetime. Relationships you made with this game of softball are lifelong relationships with players and coaches. Uh, we want to be in their lives forever. I, I tell the, the girls every year at the banquet, I, I consider it a success if I get invited to your wedding someday. Uh, that means I did a good job as a coach. One of those seniors is Claire Sanoa, who will be going from a warrior to a gopher. 
But the future Minnesota infielder wasn't focused on herself when the season was canceled. She was focused on the teammates that were probably told they'll never get to play the game they love again. It's very hard for me to know that there's a lot of seniors on my team that weren't going to play again or play in college or even summer. We don't know what summer's going to look like. So it was very hard for me to kind of think about that and think, oh, I still have four years. Like, I get, I get to step on the field again, and they might – they might not get to have that chance. And it's safe to say that Sanoa will be a coach's dream as a gopher, as she feels this time of adversity will only strengthen her for the future. It's kind of weird to think that I kind of took all of that for granted because I thought I had one more season. I thought I had 20 more games. I thought you know, I had more time with my teammates, you know. And so for sure, mentally, I think I'm going to be a lot more prepared for college because I'm not going to take anything for granted. Reporting from Brainerd, Brad Hamilton, Lakeland News. On June 10th, Governor Tim Walz and the State Health Department gave the green light for gyms and fitness centers to reopen at 25% capacity. And for Joan Peterson, who is the owner of FitQuest here in Baxter, being able to reopen her gym for the first time since mid-March simply meant the world. I mean, it was such a strange thing just being closed for three straight months. You know, it was a week short of three months. Um, I was ecstatic when I found out we could finally open, um, a little nervous to make sure that we were doing everything right and following all the rules. And these new rules that Peterson mentioned are things such as having individual sanitizer stations or having each cardio user pick every other machine, even things like wiping up the equipment that you use before and after, and lastly but not least, keeping each person at least six feet away from each other. Order a lot of extra cleaning products and different things, and it was really hard to get them, so I was kind of stressed about that. Finally got things in order and in place, and then and finally got to go ahead to open. And for Ryan Powers, who's a college student spending his summer back at home, getting to walk through these doors again has been a huge lift. It's nice because, I don't know, you just get bored of being, being at home, so it's fun to be able to come here and blow some steam for a few hours, get back to, like, normalness, I guess, and be able to go places, go to the gym, go out to restaurants and kind of just get back to regular life. And as Powers proceeds through his daily lift, he's trying to be as mindful as possible and adjusting to this new workout norm. It's just different because you have to wipe down the machines and equipment app every time you use them. Um, try to stay away from people. And though this new norm of working out might take some time and getting used to, it's safe to say it's just a minor adjustment compared to the many major adjustments in this 2020 pandemic. Reporting from Baxter, Brad Hamilton, Lakeland News. The 43rd year of the Gordy Scar Memorial Golf Tournament took place earlier today to help raise scholarship money for the BSU student athletes. Alumni and donors took part in the socially distanced version of this year's fundraiser in an effort to continue supporting both current and future Beaver athletes. Back in 1978, the Lake Gordy Scar started a golf tournament to help raise scholarship funds for future Bemidji State athletes. And from its inception to now, the tourney has raised nearly $800,000, which has helped countless student athletes realize their college sports dreams. That is why for head football coach Brent Bolte, the tournament is critical in helping all of the athletic programs compete. Kind of an arms race in, in even Division II athletics at this point. So it goes a long way. Every dollar that we get uh, is another student athlete that we can possibly bring onto campus. Head women's basketball coach Chelsea DeVille shared that every year, the tourney makes her proud to be a part of an athletics program that so strongly backs all of their athletes. And she expressed that anything that is given monetarily is both appreciated and needed. It's a big piece of what BSU is, and we're proud to be a big piece of Bemidji State University, so anytime anyone gives anything, it helps. But for both coaches, the fundraiser is about more than just money received, as they highlighted getting to see so many former Beaver players they get to share on old stories and bond as one giant athletics fraternity. It's just a, it's a fun day to have all the different sports kind of wrap back in and, and telling all the days of um, from Bemidji from years ago. And you see so many alum that just come back and whatever they're doing in their professional life now they give back through it so it's, it's pretty special. Even through these pandemic times, Bemidji State alumni and donors came together for the 43rd time today to help keep supporting their athletes in the same way that Gordy Scar intended back in 1978. The golf tourney was hosted today by the BSU Alumni and Foundation. Lakeland News is member-supported content.